Matthew chapter number 26. The Bible says this in verse 40, 47. And of course, if you're a student of the Bible, you know that Jesus has been in the Garden of Gethsemane praying. And he has already had the Last Supper with his disciples. He had forecast that one of them would betray him. Peter had boasted that, you know, although all would deny him, he would deny him. And he told him before the cock crew, he'd deny him three times. All that's taken place. He's taken his inner circle, Peter, James, and John, with him to Gethsemane. He has went three times to pray. And they couldn't watch and pray with him. He has prayed, as it were, great, sweat, uh, great drops of blood. His sweat had turned to great drops of blood. Uh, the Father has sent angels to minister unto him. And now we pick up the story. In verse number 47, the Bible says, And while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came, and with him a great multitude with swords and staves from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now he that betrayed him gave them a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, that same as he, hold him fast. And forthwith he came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. And Jesus said unto him, Friend, wherefore art thou come? Then came they and laid hands on Jesus and took him. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Then said Jesus unto him, Put up again thy sword into his place, for all they that take the sword shall perish with the sword." Thinkest thou that I cannot now pray to my Father, and he shall presently give me more than twelve legions of angels? But how then shall the Scriptures be fulfilled that thus it must be? In the same hour, said Jesus to the multitudes, Are ye come out against a thief with swords and staves for to take me? I sat daily with you teaching in the temple, and ye laid no hold on me. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then all the disciples forsook him and fled. Let's pray. Father, we bless you. Our hearts, Lord, have been just so blessed tonight. We are overflowing at your goodness. God, we certainly have enjoyed the good singing. We've enjoyed the good testimonies. But more importantly, Lord, we've enjoyed the good spirit in which the singing and testimonies have been done in. Lord, we're thankful that we were in this place tonight. Lord, what we have experienced could not be bottled up and sold for a price. Because, Lord, it is invaluable to have the presence of God and His touch in our midst. And Father, we sure do bless you and praise you that, God, you chose to shine on us again tonight. Now, Father, you know, as I was back there reading, that you struck a chord in my heart. And God, I don't know what you're going to do with this, but, Lord, I pray that, Lord, if somebody can get some help, you'd help them. Lord, if somebody needs to be convicted, you'd convict them. Lord, if somebody needs to draw up closer, God, you'd draw them. Lord, if somebody needs some assurance, you'd give them some assurance. God, we just pray you'd continue to bless and touch and help folks. Uh, Lord, help me to be a zero and you just be the hero. God, you just do great and mighty things uh, and we'll be glad to tell everybody it was the Lord who did it. Now, Lord, we bless you and praise you. Thank you for your excellent greatness. Have your will and way now. Use this unworthy vessel. We'll bless your holy name for it. Uh, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we do pray. Amen and amen. Now, there are 
four principles uh, in the verses we read that I want to look at tonight. Four uh, 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 different individuals that, my dear friends, represent uh, many that we may come in contact with uh, and even many that maybe we go to church with. Uh, but I find some things in here that God spoke to my heart about. Uh, the first thing I want you to notice, uh, I want you to notice in this story there is a foe. Uh, and can I say, uh, uh, whether or not you believe it, uh, you have an enemy tonight. Uh, you have a foe. Uh, uh, you have a fella uh, who doesn't run around in a red suit uh, with a pitchfork and horns, uh, but he's hard at work, uh, and he's not for you. He's against you. Uh, and friend, he'll work on your mind. Uh, he'll work on your thought process. Uh, he'll work against everything in your life. Uh, he wants to destroy your joy. Uh, he wants to destroy your testimony. Uh, he wants to make you cold and calloused. Uh, he doesn't want you to enjoy the things of God and friend if he can't do that to you he'll get in somebody else and he'll call somebody of a human agency to be anti you and they'll present themselves in your life they'll hurt you they'll do everything in their power to destroy what you're standing for now I want you to look at the foe in this portion of scripture we know him. He's such a foe that his very name means a traitor in most circles. As a matter of fact, if you call somebody a Judas, you're really talking bad about him. We find here that Judas uh, comes uh, after he sold out Jesus. In verse 47, uh, uh, while he yet spake, lo, Judas, one of the twelve, came and with him a great multitudes with swords uh, and staves from the chief priest uh, and the elders of the people. Uh, now he that betrayed him gave him a sign, saying, Whomsoever I shall kiss, uh, the same as he, uh, hold him back. Uh, can I say something about this right here? Uh, uh, if Jesus was such a scoundrel, wouldn't you know that uh, they would, wouldn't they know who he was? I mean, uh, 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 haven't you ever watched a Western and they got the most wanted signs everywhere and they got a picture of the person they're looking after? Uh, 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 you go down to the post office, uh, uh, used to, they'd have a bulletin board uh, and they'd have the FBI most wanted uh, uh, pictures up there. Uh, uh, nowadays, uh, uh, if you call Crime Stoppers and the police got a sketch of whoever the scoundrel is, uh, it'll be on the news. Uh, we're looking for this person. Uh, with this characteristics uh, last seen wearing this clothing uh, if you see him call crime stoppers uh, uh, well can I say uh, uh, Jesus uh, upset the Pharisees and the scribes every day uh, every time he got up and spoke uh, it was a spear through their heart uh, uh, don't you think they know who he was uh, uh, yet Judas has to get a multitude uh, and Judas says uh, he's the one that I kiss uh, uh, and doesn't that just say something in your heart uh, uh, that these men uh, didn't have a clue what they were doing. Uh, doesn't it say something about Judas uh, who spent three and a half years with Jesus. Uh, Jesus fed him. Uh, Jesus clothed him. Uh, Jesus took care of him. Uh, and yet uh, uh, in his heart uh, he was anti-Jesus. Uh, he loved money. Uh, he loved prestige. Uh, he was always wanting his hand in the pot. Uh, uh, can I help you with something? Uh, uh, there may be even some against us tonight. Uh, uh, they sit amongst us. Uh, uh, they feast when we feast on the things of God. Uh, but they are anti-Jesus. Uh, they'd sell Jesus out in a heartbeat uh, if they gain something from it. Uh, but I want you to notice something about the foe. And this set shockwaves in my soul. Look what it says in verse number 49. And forthwith, he, Judas, came to Jesus and said, Hail, Master, and kissed him. You know what that word hail means? Be well. Knowing he's going to betray him and Jesus is going to be tried 
and most likely put to death, he says, be well. And then he calls him master. The term master means Lord, but look in your Bible. Is master capitalized? So does Judas know him as Lord? No. And then he kissed him. I preached one time on kissing the door to heaven and then dying and going to hell. But here he's putting on a front, Brother Thad, while stabbing him in the back. He's kissing him. He's telling him, be well. And he's even calling him master, but he doesn't mean it. And yet, there are some who will sing, oh, how I love Jesus, but they don't mean it. There are some that the devil has planted in God's garden. They're not wheat, they're tares. And they're there for one reason, and that's to tear apart what God's are trying to do. I want to say, and I want to say this, hear me well. The more God gets the blessing around here, the more the devil's going to get hard at work. If Jesus had 12 and one of them was of the devil, I promise you the devil's got some even in our midst. Mm. Now don't be looking around trying to figure out who Judas is. Keep your eyes on Jesus. But don't be fooled, friend. Don't be confounded uh, uh, when somebody stands up against what God's are doing. Mm. They, uh, listen, when the heat gets on, those that don't know the master, they'll start crying out. They can't handle it. Some of them looked a little crazy when you took a lap. Don't think I didn't notice that. You're too old to run, brother. You know God was in it. If Phil would have done that, he'd pulled a hamstring about three steps into it. I'm just telling you, don't be dismayed if somebody tries to stop what God's been doing around here. There's the foe. I want you to notice, secondly, the fighter. Hmm? And look with me, if you will. Verse 51. And behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Mm -mm. And then Jesus said, Put up thy sword in his place, uh, and all they that take thy sword shall perish with the sword. Thinkest not that I canst now uh, pray to my father, and he presently give me more than twelve legion of angels. That's over twelve thousand angels. No. Uh, but you got one who's a fighter. Now, bless God, Peter's has got him a lot of problems in his life. But hallelujah, he did love the Lord. Uh, now, he popped off a whole lot, and he didn't always back up what he popped off about. But when they come put their hands on the Lord, bless God, Peter said, uh-uh, not my presence, uh, and he stood up for the Lord. Uh, hey, thanks be unto God, there's some. They aren't always uh, screwed on the right boat. Are you listening? Uh, they're not always doing what they're supposed to do. But hey, uh, when it gets on, they're going to stand up for Jesus. Uh, hey, thank God for some who still earnestly contend for the faith. Uh, uh, thank God for some who still got a sharp two-edged sword, uh, not afraid to use it. Uh, let folks know where they stand. Uh, let folks know they love Jesus. Uh, and there's just some things you're not going to do in my presence when it comes to Jesus. We got a fighter, huh? Now, I know a lot of people get real nervous when you start talking about carrying a weapon. Well, Peter did. Thank you, Tony. Huh? Did it not say he drew out a sword? Now, it doesn't call his name here, but read the other Gospels. It, it names who he is. And it always dumbfounds me. He cuts off that dude's ear, and then Jesus picks it up and puts it back on, and it's better than they ever. Probably had a hearing problem before that, and then Jesus healed him, and then he heard like he never heard before. How in the world can you arrest somebody who just did a miracle in front of you? 
And then when they asked him if he was them and he said, I am, uh, they all fell down at the power of him proclaiming who he is. How do you get up and you arrest a man uh, when he just reveals who he is in the power of God? Knocks you on your keister, huh? Huh? But old Peter, he did, he did uh, defend the Lord. And then the Lord rebuked him because the Lord didn't need to be defended. And the Lord had been telling them, and here's why the Lord rebuked him. The Lord had been telling them what was coming. Amen. And they had to be betrayed. The Bible prophesied to be betrayed for 30 pieces of silver. He had to go to Calvary. The scriptures had to be fulfilled or you and I wouldn't have had hope. Yes, sir. And that's why I rebuked him. He didn't rebuke him because of his love for the Lord and his fight for the Lord. He rebuked him uh, uh, because he was out of order because Jesus was in the perfect will of God. Uh, we see a foe. We see a fighter. But oh, this verse. Oh, this verse. This verse causes me great agony. See, Jeremiah says that the heart is deceitful. No man knoweth it. And just like Peter told the Lord prior to this, he'd never deny him, and then he went on to deny him three times. You and I got to be very careful what we say we will and will not do. I shudder to think that what I'm about to read to you could happen to all of us. The Bible says in verse number 56, we see a foe, we see a fighter, but here we find the forsakers. But all this was done that the scriptures of the prophets might be fulfilled. And here it is, then just a couple of the disciples. Is that what it said? All. all. Even John, the disciple whom Jesus loved. All the disciples forsook him and fled. They were forsakers. Now, bless God, we can beat our chest and say what we will and won't do. But, friend, until the heat's on, you really don't know what you'll do. Amen. They all forsak forsook the Lord and fled. Every last one of them. Now, let me ask you something. We throw off on old sorry, no good Judas for selling him out, but didn't they sell him out too? Yes, sir. Hmm? Did they just not deny him as much as Judas did? Yes. They all forsook the Lord and fled. My dear friends, what causes me agony in that verse, thinking that under certain circumstances would I flee? Would I forsake the Lord? One of them children singing touched our hearts. But under certain circumstances, would you junk them children and forsake the Lord and the things of God? Can I say there have been greater men of God than me that are no longer in the ministry? There have been greater singers than what we have that are no longer singing for Jesus. There have been greater prayer warriors than what we have that are no longer praying. See, the one who empowered Judas is strong, friends. And he is relentless and never, ever quits. The reason we need to continually draw nigh to God because if we're not drawing nigh to Him, we're already forsaking Him. I said there are four principles I want you to see. We've seen the foe. We've seen the fighter. I identify a lot with Peter, not good Peter. Peter always popped off the mouth. I'm bad for that. Peter was hot-headed. I'm bad for that. Peter was quick to draw a sword. I'm probably bad for that. So I identify a lot with Peter. And it makes me anxious. We see the fighter. We see the foe. We see the forsakers. 
but I notice a friend. Look at verse 50. Now Judas has just come and said, Hail, be well. Called him master and kissed him. Now, in that day, that was customary. That was like what we do when we shake hands. That's why Paul said, greet one another with a holy kiss. That's why still in Middle Eastern countries, they'll kiss each other on each cheek when they come to greet one another. He's kissed him. He said, be well. And he's called him master. And he didn't mean any of it. And guess who knew that he didn't mean any of it? The one who'd already told him when he dipped sop with him, this is the one that's going to betray me. The one that looked at him and told him, says, that that thou doest, do it quickly. And the Bible said Judas left out, and Satan entered into him immediately. Jesus knew uh, Judas' heart, just like he knows our hearts. And Jesus, when he knows he doesn't mean it, when he knows that he's a fraud and a fake, when he knows that he sold him out for 30 pieces of silver, Jesus called him friend. You know why? Because Jesus is a friend to sinners and publicans. Jesus is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Jesus is a friend that loveth at all times. Uh, Jesus is a friend to you and I. Yeah, the old songwriter said, Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. Uh, uh, my dear friends, uh, even when he knows we're going to blow it, uh, even when he knows that we might forsake him, uh, even when he knows uh, uh, that we won't keep our commitments, uh, even when he knows what we're made of uh, and that we'll fail his grace uh, and that we won't live up to what we should be, uh, he still looks at us in mercy uh, and in grace uh, and in pity uh, and in love uh, and he says uh, I'm your friend uh, I'm glad we got a friend in Jesus uh, a friend who laid down his life that we might have life uh, a friend who blesses when we don't deserve it uh, a friend who loves us uh, when we're unlovable uh, a friend who's quick to forgive uh, a friend who's quick to forget uh, a friend who's always there uh, whenever we need him uh, one writer said, a true friend is somebody that knows all your good traits, traits, your bad traits, and still chooses to be your friend. Can I say Jesus knows our down sitting and our uprising. He knows the number of the hairs on our head. Uh, uh, Jesus knows our thoughts and the intents of our heart. Uh, he knows our frame. Uh, he knows we're made of dust. Uh, uh, but he still chose to die for us. Uh, and he still chooses to be our friend. Uh, uh, the many times we fail him. Uh, and he's still our friend. Uh, hey, what a blessing. Uh, we got a friend in Jesus. Uh, oh, how we ought to bless him. His holy name uh, he's our friend can I help you something he's greater than the foe just keep your eyes on your friend the foe won't affect you can I help you with something the friend is stronger than the fighter he fought the greatest battle could ever be fought and he died in an open shame uh, but he overcame uh, and he defeated death, hell, and the grave. Uh, he's the champion of champions. Uh, let him fight your battles, friend. That's what he's teaching Peter. Can I say? Some of your dearest friends will forsake you just like they did him. But he'll never forsake you because he's your friend. He's a friend that loveth your soul. He's a friend that cares about you tonight. You know, I got excited when they were singing, I love him. I love him. But best of all, he loves me. Because I just read that. And I seen where Judas says, Be well, master, and kissed him. Judas is showing affection to him. But the next verse, Jesus looks at him and calls him friend. Best of all, Jesus, Judas. Jesus wanted to save Judas. 
Jesus died for Judas. Uh, Judas, Judas chose not Jesus, uh, but Jesus still chose to love Judas. Uh, Amen. I love him. Amen. But best of all, he loves me. Amen. Can I say it's easy to love him? He's altogether lovely. Even Pilate said, I find no fault in him. Even the multitude with the staves and the swords, they wouldn't even know who he is. Why? Because he's so perfect, he doesn't stand out in the crowd. He's just wonderful. Judas had to point him out. What can I say? It's easy to love him. Huh? Shunammite may describe Solomon, which is a real reflection of who Jesus is, said he's the cheapest of 10,000 to my soul. What can I say? Why he would love me. I don't know. But because he does, I want to be his friend back. Yes, sir. I want to live for him. I don't want to forsake him. I don't want to flee. I want to see others herald him. I want to see others come to know him. I want these young people to grow up and look back and say, all that preaching Brother Doug done, all that singing the choir done, all them testimonies, folks testify, it's true, it's true, it's true. Amen. Jesus is uh, all that really matters. Sure. Because he is all that really matters. Amen. I said this, I said all to say this. What kind of friend are you to him? Now don't boast. Which will will not do. You better off say this with the good Lord's help. And by the grace of God, I'll not forsake him or not flee from him. But I wonder. I learned this in years gone by. You can tell a lot about people by watching the patterns in their life. In a moment, anybody could do anything. But sustaining it is a whole different scenario. And if somebody has been there day in, day out for 20 years, you can pretty much count on them. They're going to be there. But if somebody's up and down and in and out and up and down, every time we have a revival meeting, they're in the altars crying tears, standing up saying, I haven't done right, and I'm going to do right from this time forth. And then two weeks later, you can't find them again. Then we have another revival meeting, they're back in there. Uh, that tells me they're yo-yo. Oh, yeah. yep. They're not consistent. No. Hmm. See, in a moment, you can do anything. But it takes Jesus doing something in your heart to sustain it. Amen. Hmm? So what kind of friend you been to him? Hmm? How much does he really mean to you? Because you mean the world to him. Because he died for you. And all he says is live for him. What kind of friend are you? What kind of friend have we been? What have we done with all that God's been doing these last few weeks? You know we've had more God in this place than some churches have ever had. What are you doing with it? God isn't just dumping handfuls of purpose on us just to soak it up and get spiritually fat. He's wanting us to get as close as we can to Him and then go out and impact somebody else. He wants us to be a friend to him. You see, you don't have any problems spending time with your friends. You don't have any, any problems having conversation with your friends. You don't have any problems telling others about what your great friend you got. Well, that's what he wants out of us. What kind of friend you been? What are you doing with what he's given you, what he's blessed you with? Boy, he's been good to us. Amen. What are we doing with it? Hmm? I don't want to be a foe, a fraud. Somebody puts on a facade, 
a wolf in sheep's clothing. That's all the things Judas was. I don't want to be him. I don't don't want to be a fighter. I don't want to fight against God. I don't want to fight against the things of God. I certainly want to stand up when he wants me to stand up, but I want to shut up when he wants me to shut up. I definitely don't want to forsake him and flee from him. The only other thing I can be in there is a friend. Because he has been a friend to me. He was a friend to all of them. And they all forsook him. I wonder, what kind of friend are you to Jesus tonight? What will you do for Jesus? How will you be counted for Jesus? Can I say this? If there's two things that's said about you, nothing better can be said about you. If your contemporaries will say that you love Jesus and that you're a friend of Jesus, what better could be said of you? What better compliment could you have? Hmm? What better thing could be said? There's Miss Amy Jo. You know, she loves Jesus. What better thing could be said of you than that? Huh? Trev would go up there praising the Lord. What better thing could be said? That young man has known Jesus about a year, and he ain't got over it. That boy must love Jesus in a crowd of just this many people not hesitate to say I want to praise the Lord hmm? huh? brother B what greater thing could be said of you brother Brian is a friend of Jesus Shh. you remember when you used to kick him remember when you used to deny him knowing how you was raised and yet you still was more interested in raising hell than being Jesus' friend but he didn't give up did he he just came to where you was one day Amen. and showed you that he was your friend. What greater thing could be said? That Brian, he's a lot of things, but you know one thing he really is? He's a friend of Jesus. Amen. Don't you want to be known as that? That old hymn writer said, I'll be a friend of Jesus. Amen. Can you imagine how his heart must be broken when he looks across the world? At 8 billion people on this, on this earth. Many have never heard his name. That's got to break his heart. I mean, his name is the greatest of all names ever given. The first time it was ever spoken, an angel spoke it. And the Bible says, none other name is given under heaven, whereby men must be saved. And when he looks and he sees billions of people have never even heard his name. Can you imagine how heartbroken he is? And then can you imagine the ones that have heard the gospel and just shrugged it off as nothing? Can you imagine how that breaks his heart? Can you imagine how many that have named his name and have claimed to be saved, and many are saved, but they've turned and fled like this crowd? Can you imagine how that breaks his heart? Can I say, the wounds he suffered on the cross are nothing compared to the wounds that he has today. With that process, thinking in your minds right now, can you imagine that when he looks and there's a few who are a friend, what joy that must bring him? You want to please the Lord? Just be his friend. When you call him master, mean it. When you offer him affection, mean it. Just spend time with him. Just talk with him. Walk with him. Can you imagine what that means to the darling son of God? When so many have rejected, and yet there's still a few that say, I'll reach my hand to your nail-pierced one. I'll walk with you. I'll sing about you. I'll talk to you. I'll tell others how wonderful you are. Can you imagine how that makes him feel? In just a few Short verses from where we read. His hands and feet are going to be pierced. He's going to be suspended between heaven and earth after he's been beaten beyond recognition because he looked ahead in time and he said, I want to be your friend. 
And so tonight, when you are his friend, his wounds are healed. His heart is overflowing. And he says, it was well worth it because I have a friend who believed on me. So tonight, just be his friend. Just love him like he loves you. Just long for him like he longs for you. My dear friends, if we will truly become that, hell don't have enough foes to stop what God's doing around here. For the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church of the living God. Do you know when hell wins? When we sit down and quit being Jesus' friend. Hmm. You want to fight hell? Here's how you do it. Just love Jesus. Just keep singing for Jesus. Just keep talking with Jesus. Just keep walking with Jesus. No matter what hell throws at you, you just keep on keeping on for Jesus. And it's a black eye and a bruise to Satan's head every time we meet and God meets with us. Hmm? Just be Jesus' friend. How about it tonight? Them kids sang about him. Hmm? I wonder, are you willing to live a life that shows those kids what they're singing about is real? Not everyone on this platform have come to know him yet. How about it? Will you be a friend to Jesus? I'm done. Brother Ray, come get a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. Lord, I've boasted, and every young Christian has boasted throughout generations. Boy, if we'd have been there, Lord, we wouldn't have stood for him to come and take you. But we've seen how you rebuked Peter. Because had you not bled and died, we would have never been, had an opportunity to be saved. We could have never known you as our friend. Thank you for being our friend. Lord, even when we're unfriendly, you're still our friend. Lord, help us to be your friend. God, speak to hearts now. Lord, it wasn't a salvation message by any means. But I know the sweet Holy Ghost of God does what he needs to do. So I pray. Some here tonight not saved. Tonight be the night they make Jesus their friend. I pray for that one that's been on the fence. They'd get off the fence. That one just on the edge, they'd just jump in. Lord, you truly continue to do a work in our midst. Help us, Lord, when obstacles and trials come, not to forsake you, but to run to you. Help us, Lord, to lean on thee, the wonderful darling son of glory. Have your way now in this invitation. Speak to hearts. We'll bless you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.